You flip a switch on the wall and suddenly your room fills with bright light. You plug your phone into the wall and it starts charging. You turn on the TV and cartoons appear like magic. But where does all this invisible power actually come from? Today, I'll explain electricity to you like you're five years old. And by the end, you'll understand how we make this amazing invisible energy, how we store it, and why grown-ups argue about the best ways to keep the lights on. And think of it like water flowing through pipes, except you can't see it, and instead of making things wet, it makes things work. This invisible energy can turn into light, heat, movement, or sound. But here's the thing about electricity. It doesn't just appear out of nowhere. Someone has to make it first. Kind of like how someone has to bake cookies before you can eat them. Making electricity is called generating it, and there are lots of different ways to do it. Some ways are old and dirty, some are new and clean, and some are right in between. Let's start with the oldest and dirtiest way, burning coal. Coal plants work exactly like this, except everything is much, much bigger. They burn huge piles of black rocks called coal to make fire. This fire then heats up water until it turns into steam, which is just water that got so hot it turned into invisible gas. Now, this steam has a special job. It pushes against giant spinning wheels called turbines. These turbines are connected to special machines called generators. When the turbine spins, it makes the generator spin too. And when the generator spins, it creates electricity. It's like riding a bicycle that powers a light bulb instead of moving you forward. The problem with coal plants is that burning coal makes a lot of dirty smoke and invisible gases that float up into the sky. They also trap heat around the earth, making the whole planet warmer, which causes problems for animals, plants, and people everywhere. So smart people started looking for cleaner ways to make electricity. One of the cleanest ways is using the sun. Here's how solar panels work. They're made up of special materials that get excited when sunlight hits them. When these materials get excited by the sun, tiny invisible particles called electrons start moving around. When electrons move in the same direction, that movement is electricity. It's like having a bunch of invisible ants all marching in the same direction, carrying energy from one place to another. Solar panels are amazing because the sun gives us free energy every single day. The sun doesn't send us a bill, it doesn't make dirty smoke, it doesn't run out of sunshine. As long as the sun is shining, solar panels can make electricity. The only problem is that sometimes it's cloudy and sometimes it's nighttime, so solar panels can't always make power when they need to. That is where wind power comes in. Wind turbines look like giant pinwheels on tall poles. Just like with the coal plants, the spinning blades are connected to generators that make electricity when they turn. But just like solar panels, wind turbines have a problem. Sometimes the wind doesn't blow. You can't control when the wind decides to take a break. Another clean way to make electricity is by using water. Hydroelectric plants are built near rivers or waterfalls, and they use the flowing water to spin turbines, just like how coal plants use steam and wind farms use air. The flowing water pushes against the turbine blades, making them spin, which makes the generators create electricity. Water power is reliable because rivers keep flowing day and night but you do need to have a river in the right place, and building dams can sometimes hurt fish and other animals that live in the water. There's also nuclear power, which is like having a controlled tiny sun inside a special building. Nuclear plants use special rocks called uranium that naturally give off enormous amounts of heat. This heat is used to boil water into steam, and then everything works just like a coal plant from there. Steam spins turbines, turbines spin generators, generators make electricity. Nuclear power can make huge amounts of clean electricity without burning anything or making any dirty smoke. The tricky part is that their uranium rocks stay dangerous for a very long time, so we have to be extra careful about where we put them when we're done using them. Now, here's a big problem with electricity. You can't really store it very well. It's not like water that you can just put into a bucket and save for later. Electricity wants to flow and be used right away. It's like trying to capture lightning in a jar. This means that the exact moment someone turns on a light bulb, somewhere else, a generator has to make that exact amount of electricity. If everyone suddenly turned on their air conditioners at the same time on a hot day, the power plants would have to work extra hard to make enough electricity for everyone. And this is why we need batteries. Batteries are like little storage containers for electricity, but they work in a sneaky way. They don't actually store electricity directly. Instead, they store it by turning it into chemical energy. Kind of like how your body stores energy from food. When you need the electricity back, the battery turns the chemical energy back into electrical energy. It's like having a magic box that can turn electricity into invisible energy soup and then turn the soup back into electricity when you're hungry for power. The batteries in your toys and phones are small, but there are also giant batteries the size of buildings that can store electricity for whole cities. And these huge batteries help solve the problem of solar panels not working at night and wind turbines not working when the air is still. During the day, when solar panels are making lots of electricity, the extra power can be stored in giant batteries. 
Then, at night, when the solar panels are sleeping, the batteries can give back the stored electricity. But storing electricity is expensive and complicated. Those giant batteries cost a lot of money and they don't last forever. They're like really expensive toys that eventually break and need to be replaced. This is one of the big challenges with clean energy, making sure we can store enough power to keep the lights on even when the sun isn't shining and the wind isn't blowing. This brings us to why grown-ups argue so much about electricity. Some people think we should keep using coal and other fossil fuels because they're reliable and we already know how to use them. They work day and night, rain or shine. Coal plants can make electricity whenever we need it, as long as we keep feeding them coal. And it's these same people that worry that if we switch over to solar and wind too quickly, we might not have enough power when we really need it. Other people think that we need to switch to clean energy as fast as possible, because burning fossil fuels is making the earth too warm and the air too dirty. They believe that even though solar panels and wind turbines can't work all the time, we can solve that problem with better batteries and by building lots of different types of clean energy in lots of different places. If it's not sunny in one place, maybe it's windy in another. Then there are people who think nuclear power is the answer because it can make huge amounts of clean electricity all the time, both day and night. But other people are scared of nuclear power because, well, if something goes wrong, it can be very dangerous. They remember accidents at nuclear plants that made areas unsafe for people to live in for years. And the truth is, we probably need a mix of different ways to make electricity. Some days might be perfect for solar power, other days might be great for wind power, and we might need reliable backup power from other sources when the weather doesn't cooperate. It's like having different tools in a box. Sometimes you need a hammer, sometimes you need a screwdriver, and sometimes you need both. The really exciting part, though, is that people are inventing new ways to make and store electricity all the time. Scientists are working on better batteries that can store more power for longer. Engineers are designing solar panels that work better on cloudy days. Other smart people are figuring out how to use ocean waves, underground heat, and even garbage to make clean electricity. Some places are also getting really good at using clean energy. I mean, there are entire countries that sometimes make all their electricity from renewable sources like wind, water, and sun. There are cities that have covered their roofs with solar panels. There are farms that grow food and make electricity at the same time by putting solar panels above their crops. The future of electricity is probably going to be cleaner, smarter, and far more interesting than what we have today. We might have solar panels that look like regular windows. We might have tiny wind turbines on every building. We might have better batteries that can power your house for days during a storm. We might even figure out how to make electricity the same way the sun does, by smashing tiny atoms together, which would give us almost unlimited clean power. What's really amazing, though, is that all of this invisible energy flowing through wires started with people figuring out that moving magnets near metal wires creates electricity. That discovery led to everything from light bulbs to computers to electric cars. The same basic idea that makes electricity in a giant coal plant also makes electricity in a tiny solar panel on a calculator. So remember, electricity isn't actually magic, even though it seems like it. It's invisible energy that we make by spinning generators with steam, wind, water, or by catching sunlight with special panels. We send this energy through wires to power everything in our homes and cities. We're getting better at making it cleanly and storing it for when we need it. And even though grown-ups argue about the best way to make electricity, they all agree on one thing. We need it to keep our modern world running. And so there you have it, the complete story of electricity from dirty coal plants to clean solar panels. We make invisible energy by spinning things or catching sunshine, we send it through wire roads to power everything we use, and we're always trying to find better, cleaner ways to keep the lights on. Now go flip a light switch with the confidence of someone who actually knows what's happening behind the wall. Just don't go sticking forks in electrical outlets to test your new knowledge.